players are down. That includes Swole. It's the first race. Calm down. You were wrong, mate. <laughs> Everything was just hanging out. The dude needs to get a sponsorship from Manscaped ASAP. Would you support me racing with my balls and <laughs> out? Dude, she probably thinks I suck. Holy Sometimes. Shit. And the amount of shit that's just been happening all over the place, like it really, it could go any Anything sort of happen. Happen. Usually you can at least hear him. He revs the freaking gas gas louder than two skeletons banging on a tin roof, but I never even heard him. YouTube, how we doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank y'all very much for watching. It's Maddie B and the always insightful top chick. Hey. Yeah, there we go. Solid <laughs> intro. Sorry about our quality. Obviously, we're not professional here. We had to go back to HD instead of 4K because I have my storage is full from a weekend of arena crash. But I mean, this video is mostly about the audio anyway, and that's subpar too. So f it, we'll be all good. Um, but yeah, Detroit Supercross last night started the East Coast. 450s are still um, all over the place. Top check. What do you think in summary of the action last night? Did you? We didn't even get to watch the race together, but what do you think of it? Very entertaining, solid action. Solid action. Yeah. Say. Yeah. Interesting. She watched it here. I kind of watched it driving home from the arena crash, but not really. Mostly listened to it. Although I did get to watch most of the mains in an incredibly slow Chick Fil A drive through without Joyce. But um, yeah, we'll start with the two fifties coming out with a dub. It's about damn time this guy caught a break. Austin Forkner. Babe, I guess there is a god. Forkner made it through the first turn, and nobody else did. What do you think? I was high, I think I was a little higher on Forkner coming in than you were. What do you think? I think you were. I was really excited for him, for sure. Um, I had to rewind, like, four times to watch that crash all yeah. play out. But it was cool that he made it out of it and ended up with the win. Yeah, that's what a good start does for you. It keeps you out of trouble. I told you he was going to be working with Rhino. His hips were going to be rotated. He's probably done copious amounts of shrooms in the off season. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure the head's right, and it obviously shows with the W starting out the season right, and a lot of his competition um, was laying in a pile in the first turn, some in the wall, some with broken handlebars, some with their ball sack out. There was a little bit of everything. So um, second place, another guy I was kind of high on. I, kinda, I picked him for second in the championship, I think, Max Anstey. Um, solid ride, dude is a vet. He just stayed out of trouble, fish and chips national. Um, do you, have, do you have anything to say about Anstey? I had him underrated in my picks. Yeah, I knew did. he was going to do well. You didn't though. even think he was going to be top five in the points, I don't think. You laughed, I, at, you laughed at me whenever I mentioned Anstey. So how do you feel about that? Um, I mean, I knew he would do well, but I didn't. I wouldn't have picked him for getting second in the first race. That's for sure. You know, uh, crazy enough, you know what he got last year at the first race? What? Second. I believe it. Yeah, you were sleeping. I remember, no, I remember him doing well you were often last him. year. You were snoozing on I him. just thought everyone else would be better. Hey, it's the first race. Calm down. You were wrong, mate. <laughs> Third. This one had me stoked. Dax Bennett, top chick. Tell me what you think about the rookie. Apparently, this is like the first rookie in like 10, 12 years. Maybe I'm over-exaggerating. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. I'm not exactly a legit news network here. But first, rookie in a long time to get a podium. What do we think? I'm stoked. Kid's sick. That's yeah. our that's our homie. Yeah, definitely. I uh, got the privilege of racing with Dax a couple times while he was on his way up through A and B class. One time in the AB All Star, one time at Buds with Deegan on Amateur Day. He's always been cool. He was super fun to race with. He's a super super good kid. Um, good family, fully deserving of a podium. And uh, who I wonder if Superfan knows he he got third. Probably not. Superfan's just he'll be stoked. Yeah, Superfan. Honestly, we don't know where he's been. Fourth. Cody Shock, honestly, that was a surprise. Poor Club MX, they uh, started with three riders and only had one after the heat races. Like, you probably, do you even know much about Cody Shock? I mean, no. he's number 69, so that's cool. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I mean, Phoenix Honda dumped him. He, did, he wasn't even going to have a ride, and I guess he was putting in the work at Club MX, so um, they decided to hook him up with a third spot. He took advantage of his opportunity, so that was good to see. Pierce Brown, that's one of your favorites. He didn't even lawn dart himself. He was P5, but he did lawn dart Swole. Yep, that was one of my main takeaways from the night, how he catapulted Swole off the berm. Yeah, so that was crazy. for like fourth or fifth in a heat race, I hope there's some beef brewing. That's what we need for this channel. Um, <laughs> beef always helps. Seventh, Henry Miller, solid ride. We never saw him, never heard of him, but for a privateer deal, that's super good. Eighth, I don't know how to say his name, Gillum, Gilliam, uh, yeah, Gilli Ferez. Gilligan, Ferez, um, 
Honestly, I don't know about you. I'm just stoked the kid wasn't in that pileup. They said in the broadcast that he thought it was a joke when he got called to come over here and race. <laughs> yeah, he thought he, it was a prank. He probably did. <laughs> but, I mean, it's sick. He's making it happen. I, apparently, yeah. he... I heard a story about him. He used to uh, he used to bag groceries in Spain at wow. like a convenience store. Now he's a factory rider. He's killing it. Yeah, he yeah, is. that's yep. cool. He can go from bagging groceries to being a factory rider, but uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not even gonna roast myself. We're just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> Ninth, Welton. That's all. I saw he had a black eye. I don't know if he got in a fight at the bar the night before or something, but his face looked like he was all beat up. But I mean, if all you gotta do is punch me in the face to give me a top ten in a Supercross, I guess I would take it too. But wow. solid. You've seen Marshall Rod race a lot, like with me, with others. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's fast. Tenth, Hymas. He shouldn't have been tenth. Um, he was up front, like, all day. Did you expect that? Because I honestly... For him to get tenth? No, for him to be up front all day. He oh. was leading almost the whole heat race, left, was second for most of the main. Like, I feel like that kind of came out of nowhere. No, I mean, I knew he was... Um, he's always been fast and everything, but I didn't... I don't know enough about him yeah. to have a prediction really i feel you there romano finally came back to racing i guess he hasn't raced in like 500 days or something he got 14 he was in the first term pileup so probably just happy to be alive after that one but yeah um, i mean at least he got some race laps under his belt he kind of it's been a long time for the guy and that, that's another guy i'm a fan of him i've gotten to race with him a little bit myself and um i hope for good things for romano but it, yeah that's that's a tough way to start it but at least he's not hurt yeah, for so many people, it was like, welcome back to racing, get thrown into the wall. Yeah, straight up reality check, like me on the pit bike yeah. yesterday. 15th, here we go, best topic of conversation of the day. I was going to say night, but of the day. Um, Cameron balls out McAdoo in the first turn pileup. He somehow ripped the pants, ripped the underwear, the shaft, the balls, everything was just hanging out. The dude needs to get a sponsorship from Manscaped ASAP. They need to be running ads all week for him. Um, would you support me racing with my balls and d*** out? I mean, I wouldn't care. That would be up to you. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't really care either. You know? Yeah, if it were me, I wouldn't do it. It, w it would not be worth it yeah. to me, but that that would be your call. McAdoo owned it super good, too. He posted it and uh, with the censored pic, and he was just like, yo, y'all, like, it's cold in Detroit. Give me a break, which, I mean, I think is really funny. But... Yeah, sucks. You know, I'm sure he was hoping for a better night, and he did well in the heat race, yeah. so he was probably on a high, and then... You yeah, know. and I remember you, last night, or no, this morning we were talking and, and you were telling me there was no way you would have raced like that, you would have pulled off, but just imagine, like, if McAdoo wins this title by, like, five points or less, like, he can thank his d***ing balls for it straight up, because he... Then it'll be worth it. He soldiered on big time. Um, yeah, props to him, never gave up. Yeah, and, and with the stuff that that dude does, I don't know how he even sits down with balls that big in the first place, but then with them sticking out of the pants, like, that's just a whole other situation, so... Honestly, props, McAdoo, you were digging. I am surprised he didn't get docked. Or is that still pending? I don't know. That'd be funny getting a fine for riding <laughs> nude. No choice. Seriously. Yeah, if Coop gets fined for no interview, we might as well find McAdoo for you riding this You think? 16th, Deegan. He was riding the whole moto with the Robin Fevra handlebar down spec. Um, looked like he was flipping off the aisle or somebody as he came by down the start. Um, yeah, probably not, the, probably not the start of the season that he was looking for. You think. No, he was ripping during uh, the rest of the night, too. It, it seemed like the wrist... Um, wasn't as much of a problem as we as we no. were thinking. I, I guess he only has like a week or two on the bike. He took a little bit more time off than than their camp is saying. He had a broken skateboard, so I mean, he looked a little better than I thought. But yeah, you can't do much whenever you're riding like that, you know. I mean, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I yeah. guess it was something that he could kind of like mentally block out at least somewhat yeah, for I the rest know. of the night. I but. don't know how. It's crazy, though, like, that season, within, like, three to five seconds of the season starting, like, the whole, it was just flipped upside down, basically, all those contenders down, because um, a lot of people, myself included, actually, both of us, we had Deegan as our favorite, and starting out with the 16th, and same with McAdoo, we knew he'd be up there, too, and started out 15th, 16th, it's tough. Vial, 18th, that was another one, he was in the first turn crash, not much he could really do about that, he got beat around pretty good, because Hammaker went into him, and then, yeah, it was just, like, a bomb went off, um, Cue the Moto Memes World War Two meme about the first turn. <laughs> it's basically so basically World War Two down in the first turn, like a landmine went off. Uh, oh, big pile up! Oh, everyone, man, everybody! Twentieth, Colin Park, bummer night for him. Hopefully, he'll be back. Twenty first, Hammaker, and twenty second, Ferry Hammaker. Oof. What a brutal day. That guy probably feels like he went through a cement mixer, huh? Yeah, the crash that was it in qualifying, qualifying. I guess. First, I didn't watch it was qualifying, the first, but... first free practice he, he went down like that. Dude, that was harsh. And then uh 
the fact that he started that whole domino effect, he's yeah. gotta just be like, F Yeah, so let's, real quick, let's try to break down the the, uh, the start crash, because you and I have a little bit of differing opinions, and I've actually seen some stuff online today that people more side with you, thinking that some people were at fault. I kind of thought it was just like a shit happens, like everybody's so close off the start kind of deal, and Hammaker did kind of start it, and I'm also a little biased, because Hammaker's my boy, but it just kind of looked like they were almost to the point where they were about to start letting off and they just weren't quite there and that's when they tagged bars and everything just happened quick. So that's maybe my biased opinion of a top chick. Am I, am I stupid or what? I mean, uh, it's definitely still his fault though. Like it, it started with him. Yeah. It looked like, I, will, I do agree with you, like maybe he was about to start letting off, but if it were me, I mean, I guess I can't really say because I've never raced a Supercross, but I probably would have been letting off a little sooner than he yeah. had decided to. And um, but yeah, it definitely, he definitely got sketchy, but yeah. it, it wasn't like a, it didn't look intentional no, at no, all. No. There was no control over the situation. Definitely so. not. No, and I even but saw. But still like his fault. <laughs> I even saw, um, somebody who you'd probably be stoked that agrees with you, Phil, kind of said the same thing on Twitter. Like he understands trying to find a hole, but at some point you either have it or you don't. So. Yeah. I don't know. I felt like it was more of a racing, a racing incident, but at the end of the day, um, man, poor Seth. Like, I feel like it's kind of like Trey Kennard vibes for him because he's going so fast. Like, I don't really see him as a sketchy rider. He just happens to find himself in a lot of those situations. I feel like he just threads the needle often, and that's what gets him in trouble, which that was the same way with Kennard. Like, he would just follow with people. He would follow people so close, like, just put himself in sketchy situations and just try to let it ride. So, I hope Seth's okay. I, yeah. I mean, he might as well have laid on the highway and just let semi-trucks run over him all afternoon for how he probably feels right now but at least he salvaged one point because 22nd for Evan Ferry and we didn't even talk about the fact that Swole was on the Triumph the Triumphs actually looked like pretty damn good out there like they were getting good starts Ferry yanked the LCQ hole shot from yeah. far outside like that was actually I thought a sick debut for Triumph especially for Swole to get six like I feel like that's as good as he would have done on a Husky maybe better no yeah I agree they got some good riders and the riders seemed comfortable on the bikes they yeah. just didn't have a good night and this channel may or may not have an in on a test ride on a Triumph 250 within the next couple of months. So stay tuned. I get to ride one? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I sure don't. Finish up the 250 class. We're going to have to pour one out, light a candle. J-Mart, man. This wow. is so sad. Ouch. That poor dude has been through the ringer and back and through it again. Talk about being run through a cement mixer. Like, that poor guy. Like, Yeah. yeah. And I did hear at least it was... This is how stupid we are in motocross. I say just a concussion. Like, it was just a concussion, but the way he was looking there, like, it looked like no, his neck yeah. was messed up or something. Like, I'm just glad he'll be able to recover. So. No, for sure. That was really gnarly. Scary stuff. And that's reason number 1,820 why Matty B doesn't race Supercross, along with rule number one, not enough talent. Now on to the 450s. A lot less happening there because Jet made it super boring kind of outdoor-esque just got the whole shot managed it um not that fun to watch but he's back on top and if you think about it with stats he has won the only two 20 plus ones in dry weather this year so i mean even though the points are really close like if you kind of think about it like that kind of not good for everybody else yeah it was cool seeing him and uh anderson dice it up a little bit yeah that earlier was earlier in the night and now I've got to confront you about this since we missed it during the Triple Crown. We missed the Triple Crown last weekend, no review, but um, Jet officially cannot win 14 or 15 races. So, uh, yeah, you were uh, mildly off on that one. Any any thoughts, any rebuttal? My overall opinion was that he was going to win most of them. So. I guess, yeah, that's still up for debate, but you yeah. said 14 or 15. I was shook for sure. I thought, yeah. you had, I thought you had gotten into a stash that I don't even have in this house. That was just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crazy second sexton sexton's turning it around like we heard all the, the skepticism about the ktm in preseason but he's he's ripping now i feel like he's back and i feel last like, night yeah and i feel like he'll be more consistent he was ripping in the triple crown too he won yeah. one got second in another one yeah i but, still don't really have very much faith sorry dude dude she probably thinks i suck holy sometimes God. unbelievable um still love you nah she's lying third kickstart about brought the house down um but yeah, Kickstart Kenny third on the dinosaur. Um, what'd you think? I like the kid. I think that was like a custom fox kit. A custom fox kit, blue and white. What do you think? I honestly don't remember. Yeah, you don't remember but, him? Um 
No, good for him. I've been I've been thinking he's gonna have a good night coming up here soon. He's had some bad he's luck. He's been like so. the fastest one to not really have much results. Like he's yeah. been riding so well, and he just yeah. like it hasn't came together for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, fourth, I feel like this is maybe the most dangerous man on the night besides Jet, um, Coop, Cooper Webb, P4. And if I'm being honest with you guys, I think his whole night changed when he dumped it in the heat race because he kind of threw away a spot of a good get his chance at a good gate pick. And that start being short, 90 degree turn, um, did not really uh, lend itself to uh, an outside gate or somewhere, something with a bad rut, which is probably what Coop had to get stuck with. Um, but I think. I think if he would have won the heat race and had a good gate pick, I think Jet probably still wins, but I think Coop keeps him a little closer than Chase does and makes a run at him at the end like he always does. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think if he – I don't know. I think if he would have had a um, better start, it would have been a good battle between him and Jet. Yeah, I just – I feel like Jet still just has a tick of speed on him, but just yeah. – I don't know. I just can envision the race in my head going with Jet two, three second lead the whole time, and then the last two, three minutes, Coop making a run, and then finishing really close, kind of like it's happened a lot with, with Coop and Eli and Coop and Kenny. But I I really think this championship's coming down to those two with, with – depending on how consistent Chase stays, him as well. I I had Chase, Eli, Jet. We both did our top three, and I'm, I'm putting Coop in there. Coop's looking lethal right now. Yeah, I honestly, um, with how my picks were, would replace Coop for where I had Eli probably. Yeah, I think so too. I I honestly, though, I, I kind of am leaning towards Coop for a championship over Jet just at the moment, I think. Coop's looking. I mean, he's usually not even this this good this early. So yeah. These guys should be these guys should be stressing big time. Man, the amount of shit that's just been happening all over the place. Like it really, it could go any anything. Anything could happen. Yeah, the top four within like five points. I think so. It's, yeah. It's shaping up epic. It's good for us. We ain't got to race it, so it's been great. <laughs> Team fried fifth and the Alpine Stars kit that looked like he just did a thirty plus two at Lommel. <laughs> kind of a quiet night for him. I was kind of hoping he was going to throw Jet over the berm and then he raced just for some action, but. Played it cool. Played it like a vet. Yeah, he just stayed ahead of uh, AP, which yep. is kind of irritating. Yeah, me, that yeah. did suck. Because six AP, he lost the red plate, but he's still right in the mix without choice. Um, he was actually on his way forward. He was like just a tick off Coop, I thought. And I think he was going to get fifth. But yeah, he almost died. And uh, that one rhythm, and I think that shook him up a little bit. Anderson got back around him, but then he went by and be ailing Tomac. So he still salvaged a six. If you're going to get a six on your bad night, I feel like that's... That's, no, for sure. That's what championship rides are made of. I'm not saying he's the favorite or anything, but I'll be damned if he's not still in the conversation. For sure. Yeah. I'm excited that he's still in it. And um, if he had a better start, he probably still would have been a little further up. Yeah, because so. he won the heat race. Yeah. He came back from, what was it, like 14th I mean, it was off way the start? Back. 15th, something like and, that? And like last year, a 6th in that field was a good night for AP. And now yeah. that's, that's his night now. So, I mean, it's AP's world. We're living in it, you know? Yeah. It's sick. Seven for Andis, eight Hunter, nine Cooper. Didn't really see much out of any of them. Tenth, Tomac, um, Cole Scott. I'm just going to ask you because I have no insight myself. What the f happened to Tomac? I don't know. I have no idea. Did they say he crashed at some point, like in, uh, in practice or something? I don't know. I didn't hear about anything in practice. But the only thing, if it's not a bike problem that I could think of, is arm pump. Just because the way he was looking, he had no fight whatsoever. And on, yeah. on the... 10 times lower scale that I do it on, even at the little local arena crashes. Like, when I get arm pump like that in the tight confines and rhythm sections, loops, all that, like, I don't fight anybody either. But... Looked like he couldn't do anything no, he about just, it. No, he was just helpless out there, it looked like, which yeah. sucks, because I, I kind of thought he was going to be the fifth winner. But, um, yeah, next weekend, Glendale, he's always really good there. So, hopefully, if he doesn't have a good Glendale, I think the championship talk is kind of over for Eli. Because 10th, I mean, he just lost, like, 12, 13 points to Jet in a night. And, yeah, not ideal. Can't be doing that to these, with the guys he's trying to battle with. No, yeah, and he knows that, too, so yeah. I mean, he's probably stressing. 11th Stewart, 13th Craig. God, I hope the Husky guys didn't stay by any nearby bridges or uh, skyscrapers. Cause they Stewart gotta, was doing all right. They got really launched off the track. They got to be ready to jump. Like, yeah. they're having a bad time. Yeah. Bad time. 12th Barsha, didn't really see or hear anything of him, which is weird because... Usually you can at least hear him. He revs the freaking gas gas louder than two skeletons banging on a tin roof, but I never even heard him. <laughs> yeah, I didn't either. Yeah, crazy stuff. No crazy, notes there. Crazy times we're living in. 17th, Wilson. I don't have anything really to say about the ride for Dean Wilson. I am a fan, but um, the one thing I did want to point out, I am 
fairly sure that Dean Wilson is just feeding somebody Adderalls and having them work on the vlog all night after Supercross. Because, you know, I wake up, I go do my thing, I eat lunch, and I come back home, and Dean's vlog is already up within, like, 12 hours of the race. So bravo to whoever's doing that. Fair play. I mean, I will do my stuff on my phone. I don't even get it out that quick, so. I think he crashed. I mean, if he got, seven, if he got 17, crashed. he probably did crash, but... Yeah, Dino's tube is epic. Huge fan here. Honestly, it gives me some inspiration. Shout out to my boy Mitchell Harrison for making the main. Tristan Lane got in the main as well. Good for those guys. First ones of the year. 21st, Justin Hill. I don't know where Justin Hill's at. He might still be like trying to be a cop in Oregon because I know that's what he was doing for a little bit. But no, in, in all seriousness, I think Justin Hill's back's tweaked up. So I don't really know how you're supposed to race Supercross like that. That sucks. 22nd, Fast Freddy. How about his LCQ? <laughs> Like, Man. what do you think the average heart rate was for, like, Freddie's friends and family during that one? Well, the last few laps, it was probably panic attack. Yeah. Panic attack, for sure. I am so glad somehow he kept it together. But yeah, I man, mean, that was, I was... He saw he too. saw God clear his day, like, four or five times in two laps, and he still transferred. Like, him and Jerry, poor Jerry, he's another one. I hope he didn't stay by any bridges last night, because he had the main in sight. He could see it. He could taste it. Call me RC. It was like he was racing a running race, and he could just see the finish line, but he just didn't make it there, man. Yeah, solid analogy. But, um, yeah, like, that was brutal. Those guys were, like, simultaneous sketching, and it was like whoever got just a little less loose made it to the finish line. Like, that was crazy. I mean, Freddie made it through the sand by pure luck. Yeah, I don't crazy. even know if it was about who got less loose. It was really luck. Like, yeah. he just happened to land in an okay spot and was like, all right, I can still go. Yeah, that was crazy. And then the last guy... Um, that was in the LCQ that didn't participate in the main. Then I wanted to talk about Cade front flip Clayson. He gets kind of teed up on the face of the finish line, almost goes for the transfer Cade up route, but he instead just lands on a soft spot, does a front flip. But hey, at least he completed the front flip. It couldn't hurt that bad. That was, that sucked. Yeah. I, I thought at first he was going to save it, and you said you thought he was going to jump into the other lane. So it was I kind thought of he was going halfway. full Cade up. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I guess that's about all we got for Detroit. That was an action-packed national. 450 points are super close. 250 East is completely bad crazy. And now next weekend, we're going back to West Coast and just throwing it all in a wrench once again. So, Top Chick, thanks for talking about this with me. Yeah. As always, I appreciate it. Top Chick's not been feeling the best, but she soldiered on to do this video with me. And, uh, yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, we'll catch you guys after Glendale next weekend, unless we have too much to do, and then we might not. But, yeah, catch you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>